<laughs> There's no, no sleep don't. at MAGFest. <laughs> no, you don't. What is sleep? It's Did MAGFest. Someone fall asleep? Did someone fall asleep in the practice room? Oh, was that you, Tavon? Didn't you fall asleep? I think at some point I was did. That? I know I did. Oh, no, that was Anton. No, that was Anton. No, no, no. Nah, he, dog, he just because it. I was behind the he tables. I was behind the tables. I remember. I remember. I fell asleep in there one at one point, but it wasn't for long. <laughs> it wasn't for long. Hello and welcome to the Game Brain Podcast. I am not your host today, Allison, and I have hijacked the airspace again to bring in some fresh voices to your ear holes. Today we have another extra special episode of the podcast because I'm joined by two familiar to you voices, Casey from the Gals of the Game Brew episode, and Bob, I think the last episode you were on was Call of Bobby, Modern Podcast, right? Yep. But yeah, we have some fresh voices here too. We are really lucky to have with us Yusef and Tavon. So thank you all for joining. On our first half of the podcast, we're going to be discussing general gaming topics from the perspective of Black gamers. And on the second half, we will discuss social gaming. So I'm going to turn the episode over now to your lovely hostess, since this is your episode, (laughs) Um, Casey. And I'm just going to sit in the corner and drink some rum and coke and say nothing, which is two of my best talents. Uh So here we go. Don't let her fool you. She's also very good at late night karaoke. (laughs) Rum and Coke is still involved. (laughs) Oh, my. Uh, So, hi. I am Casey, like Allison said. Uh, The last time I was here was the Gals of the Game Brew episode. And I think last time uh, when we did introductions, uh, it was name, something fun about you, and your favorite game that you're playing right now. Favorite game is... Ooh, it's a tough... It's a tie between D&D and The Sims. Either way, I like (laughs) controlling stories. Um, And a weird thing about me is that I am currently trying to learn how to use a bow staff. So, yeah, yeah, I bought a bow staff. Allison is giving me the weirdest look right now. (laughs) (laughs) It's not terrifying. It's awesome. (laughs) Okay, uh, so next we will go to Yusuf. How about you? I guess something interesting about myself. I can't choose a single a single thing to just do. I have a lot of different interests. So music is one, gaming is one, photography is one, videography, cooking. Um, so I guess I kind of run the whole gamut. Okay. The world is my oyster and I'm trying to eat it. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, what's your favorite uh, either tabletop or computer game or video game? Right now, I think it's probably Day of Sex, Mankind Divided. Um, it's between, between that and maybe even Doom Eternal. Okay. Um, it, it's a, you know, it takes me back from when I used to play Doom back that's, in the day. That is absolutely understandable. That's that's yeah. those are two titles I would not have picked, but that is because I am bad at both of them. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, let's go to you next, Bob. Name's Bobby. Favorite games? Final Fantasy VII. It's always been close to my heart. Um, played through it entirely too many hours over multiple playthroughs, and then also just got into D anD D in the past year. It's been an interesting experience getting to play with some of my friends that way. Interesting fact, at a point in time, I was playing four different musical instruments at once. So that was a fun experience to go through. Like four at the same time, kind of one man band style or learning? I was learning and performing on four different instruments at once. Okay, because I was definitely imagining like Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins with the like drum strapped to your back, harmonica taped to your face, all of that. I might have been able to pull it off, but mm, I I stuck to one at a time. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Tavon, let's go to you next. Yeah, my name is Tavon. Uh, I normally go by Tavon Anthony, the infamous Aoxys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, what are the questions again? <laughs> uh, something interesting about you, oh. your favorite game. Okay, so weird fact about me is outside of my day job, which is boring to me, IT. I like punching people in the face. I study Muay Thai and other martial arts, but I have an obsession over cute things. So if you see a lot of chibis or a lot of plush dolls, um, on my page, don't be surprised. Uh, favorite game? Ah, uh, I don't really have a favorite game. I'm into a lot of fighters, but I, 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 I'm not gonna cheap out and say Tekken or something. So I'll just say uh, the <laughs> Assassin's Creed series. I'll just say that. Okay, okay. I think that's I think that's fair. <laughs> I think that's a, a good franchise to go with. 
All right. So the first kind of topic for today is when was the first time you saw a darker skinned character in a game that wasn't a create a character or an NPC that didn't really impact the story? Like, what was your first experience seeing someone who looked like you in a game? Yeah, I mean, I'll chime in first. Um, the first darker skinned character, I would say, is Bruce from the Tekken series. Um, okay. Yeah. And... It, it, it was sort of funny because for me, I'm like, oh, who's this guy with this cool stance? Sort of part of the reasons why I studied kickboxing and Muay Thai. I'm like, who's this guy with this nice stance? And then he had the same name as my stepdad. So I'm like, oh, he's cool. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> and I would use no one but him. And then I saw Eddie and I'm like, oh, he dances. OK, so that's um, <laughs> that's my first experience. That's not like a um, that's not a. Um, like a, an NPC or some kind. An NPC or somebody from one of the WWE games, you know. Uh, right, right. Uh, Yusuf, how about you? Probably, I would I would say, because I'm part Native American, I'd probably say Turok. It's probably okay. the, the first for me. I, I originally played Turok on the N64, so, uh, like, goodness knows how long ago that was. I was about to say, taking it <laughs> uh, all the way back. All the way back. <laughs> but... I mean, there's, I mean, definitely the Tekken series. I, I, I do remember growing up there being mostly black NPCs. I mean, it's the, a lot of, a lot of black NPCs. So, um, yep. not, not the best representation when I was, when I was growing up, but. Right, right. Uh, Bobby, how about you? When was the first time you saw somebody that looked like you in a game? Me specifically, not not often being uh, mixed between black and white, but like the first black characters I saw, I remember seeing Mike Tyson's Super Punch Out and seeing the coach. That was going to be my answer. <laughs> kind of the, the nameless people kind of in the back that were showing, supporting a main character. Outside that, like Eddie in the Tekken and then Barrett in Final Fantasy VII, kind of more of a predominant role up front. Right. I was going to say, aside from Mike Tyson, <laughs> the first time I can really remember seeing somebody that looked like me in a game was The Herbs, which was like the Sims in the hood. Oh, if you remember yeah. that. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. gosh. And... So when when Allie and I were coming up with this list of questions, we I, I mentioned that and I had to go back and look up the cover art. If you have not looked at the cover art for the herbs recently, please do, because it is literally everything you should not do in terms of like, you know, stereotypes left and right. And it was I literally was in there going. I remember playing this game and not thinking it was that bad. But looking at it now, it's just yikes on trikes. Oh, no. I remember one of the things you had to do was earn rep, was you had to earn your rep in the game. It does not hold up. <laughs> in case anyone was wondering, it does not hold up today. What is it, Def Jam Vendetta? <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that w that came up that came up to my mind too. I was like, I remember the days of just hip hop. I think uh, Wu Tang Clan had a oh, that's a fighting right. Simulator they game. did. It was just a whole <laughs> hip hop era of just video game, like most of them fighting. I need to find that because that I remember that coming out, and I think I maybe played it once. I think I played a demo of it at like EB Games or something, and I saw that they were selling like a Wu-Tang Clan PS1 controller. Oh my. I was like, mm. <laughs> I, I mean, mean I, today. I'm good with my, I'm good with my to be fair, one. to be fair, Wu-Tang is for the children. So <laughs> it makes sense. Wu-Tang is for life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that controller is worth something today. <laughs> it, oh, probably. Somebody wanted it. <laughs> I mean, given, given Wu-Tang's record of just like very rare items that they sell. That's like true. Like their own albums. I would not be surprised someday if I walked by a store and just saw like a Wu Tang fidget spinner next to a Wu Tang frisbee, next to just like all of the Wu Tang Clan as Funko Pops. Like <laughs> they have enough random merch to be their own store at this point. I know that the uh, Department of Justice uh, uh, took the Wu Tang uh, Wu Tang album from Scarelli uh, when he was arrested and thrown in jail. Really? Huh. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> I mean, because it was like worth like a million dollars. So that's like, fair. That's fair. So, yeah. So uh, technically, my job actually has it. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, could, could you could you get that for us? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, in the, it's, it's in a vault somewhere. It's like Indiana Jones hidden. So 
Fair, fair. I'm gonna have to go searching for it. So kind of along the same lines of of Wu Tang Clan having a game and and the herbs, have you ever seen any just just horrible representation in a game that you just you saw it and you were just going, Oh no, that's not us. That's that's not that no. Um, or in movies or any kind of nerddom. I think San Andreas comes to oh, mind. Oh man. <laughs> yes. You know, that, San Andreas. Uh, I mean, that's like the, the biggest culprit, but you have games like Kingpin, uh, Life of Crime. That was an FPS back in like like nineteen ninety nine or two thousand or something like that. Um okay. it was a FPS. Basically they had I mean, there was no shortage of expletives coming out of minorities in that one. I mean, there's, there's no shortage of expletives coming out of everyone, really. But I definitely remember, you know, the stereotypical, you know, hood dudes just like, you know, everybody sounded like Ving Rhames. I mean, <laughs> was, I mean, I mean it, was, it was pretty bad. I remember that very, very... Um, Did we uh, check the credits? It may have been Ving Rhames. They actually had a character that actually sounded like, I think the person, a person was trying to actually sound like Ving Rhames, if you look that up. Mm. He was kind of trying to impersonate him. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, those are the two bigger games that that come to mind. Um, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of games where, you know, black people as gangsters or otherwise have been portrayed. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing because, you know, myself, I live in the hood. Tavon, he's had his experiences with, you know, living, oh boy. living in the hood. So, you know, we, we both, I grew up in the hood. I mean, I, I live in the hood right now. So, you know, you I'm not saying that's that. like a bad thing. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying it's like a bad thing to but be it's, portrayed. But it's a stereotype at this point. You don't see, or you it's very marketable. rarely. It's yeah, marketable. it is. It you is. know, it's very marketable. You know, hood culture ghetto culture quote unquote is just a very marketable thing and so uh, having token black people in 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 video games and you know other types of media is it's not that doesn't sell nearly as well um, that's true so i think one of the more i guess egregious pieces of representation that i've seen recently was uh in the movie ma um with uh octavia spencer it was like a horror movie that came out last year and there was her, four or five random white teenagers, and one other black guy. And at one scene, she is trying to encourage all of these teenagers to come over and, and drink with her. And they, at this point, are suspicious of her. So they, they, they kind of try and pass off, oh, we're doing homework, we're doing homework. And one of the, uh, like the main jock guys is like, yeah, I'm, I'm writing a paper on the... Uh, the slave trade, and they have the black guy go, yeah, you know, all our people that were in the bellies of the ships, and I'm like, that was, no. that was out of nowhere, and that is not how that conversation would go normally. Okay. <laughs> but it was just said, and then no one reacted to it at all. <laughs> Wait, so who, so who else was in that conversation? I mean, like, so it was Octavia Spencer's character, like the four main white characters, and then one black guy that was like the token black guy of their friend group. Well, of course. I mean, like, like once he once he said something like that, no one could challenge that. Like, true. You have to have true. another black person in the in the room to challenge that <laughs> to challenge and, that quote. And she was the villain in the movie, so she wasn't going to challenge it. <laughs> right. I mean, that's 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 a common thing, though. I mean, just in general, to be the singular black person. You say something that's woke, quote unquote. I'm not, that's I'm not that's that's not what that was. But <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the the problem is is that like I guess even in that situation, like black people in movies become the authority figure on something, like on on African American right. studies, right? But, like no one else can 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 challenge that because they're not African American themselves. Even if the person's wrong in, in, in what they just said. <laughs> If if you're not part of that specific color spectrum, then the people aren't aren't, aren't going to be, and, and that causes serious issues down the line. Because right. I mean, that's not to that's not to say that when black people, I'm saying black people need to be challenged too, but right. I think people need to have history, understand history before they challenge black people. Right. To say things right. like that, we weren't all on the Amistad. Like, right. <laughs> And, and kind of to what you were saying about, you know, being the, the token 
black person and being the person that gets, you know, kind of inundated with all these questions when you say something woke, Allison can can verify we grew up in a very white town. Like I was one of what, two black kids in our graduating class? No, because it was me and Tristan and he was Hawaiian. Everyone just thought he was black because he had a fro. <laughs> oh, man. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's it's now become a thing since um, since the George Floyd incident and since, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement has picked up, you know, steam again, that I have gotten a lot of people from high school crawling out of the woodwork to ask me to explain systemic racism to them. And it's it's had to it's had to become a thing where I'm like, it's not my job. Um, And I have been. Yeah, I I passed them on to Allie and let her do the teaching. But that that does kind of become the thing where you are automatically thought to be the authority on it. Even, you know, kind of talking about in nerd culture, somebody at one point uh, at work, we were having a discussion about Black Panther before it came out. And I think it was something about like who was in the cast or what one other cast member was Letitia Wright, Letitia Wright. They were asking what Letitia Wright had been in and literally all the eyes in the room turned to me. Mm. And I was like, I, I don't know. She's British. I don't follow that many British actors. Sorry, but it, it you have phones in your pockets. You find out exactly, <laughs> exactly. But that seems to be the, the expectation that you are, somehow representative of and also an encyclopedia of knowledge for your entire race. (laughs) And actually, kind of similar thread. In the idea that Black people are not a monolith, do you feel like there are games or shows or nerd culture in general that that are marketed specifically to, you know, Black people as a whole? Do you feel like that is a an issue for like, um, like the first thing that came to my mind was, uh, things like NBA 2K, because it always feels like you've got like the Steph Curry on the cover. You've got, you know, at one point that I know they had Kobe on the cover, you know, it's never a, like, it's not really a thing where you see a, at least to my recollection, a white basketball player on the cover of like NBA 2K or anything like that. Well, I think that's, that's more like an issue of who is, on top in general in that sport. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if the person happens to be black, then that's 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 who you're gonna put on you know your, the cover of your game if you're trying to sell the game because right. people are trying to uh, ob- obtain that status. You know, youth are trying to become you know NBA players, um, football players, things like that. So of course you're going to you're going to try to sell what you think is most marketable. And if that happens to be a black person, then you know. Uh, and I, and the, the, you have to think the sales of those games are not primarily African Americans. I mean, it's the same thing with hip hop. Hip hop is not sold. There's there are more hip hop is sold more to other ethnicities than to black people. Really, I mean, right? You know, um, and so in a situation with you know games like that, um, number one, they're the games that people put on the sh- people put those on the shelves first because. Um, they're the simplest games. They don't have any serious storylines. They tie into something that people already are heavily involved with, mm. which is, you know, some kind of sport anyway. So, you know, sports right. are a very communal thing. People are going outside and playing those sports too. So, you know, it's easy to take something like that and bring it into uh, the living room um, versus like a, a fantasy game or, or something of that nature. So even if you had a, a fantasy game or, you know, some other game that had an African-American um, as the main character or um, was heavily part of a story arc doesn't mean that black people are going to, you know, go towards that because they don't have the same kind of historic, you know, connection um, with that, that type of, um, that type of game. Mm. So that's fair. Um, I think that when it comes to what African-Americans are buying, I mean, they're, they're buying Call of Duty, right? Call of Duty, I mean, how many, True. how many, Black people in Call of Duty do like come to mind like as main characters. Like, you know, I, I know I played like at least five or six. I know Sam Worthington was like the voice of one of the main characters, like yeah. Black Ops One and Two, I think. Um, but those are super super popular games. But like, I, I see maybe like one or two black people in those games. Period. Um, but those are heavily purchased by black people that I know. Like mm. that. Those are. 
on right. top right now. So, um, and you know, then you have those other games that that people buy that people just buy because they have the system. Like any Zelda game, like but you know, I know a bunch of black people that have right. the Zelda game or have the Mario game. Those obviously don't have black people in them, but black people are buying them because they either come with their consoles or that's the game that everyone says you got to buy anyways. Mm. So, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just going to see if uh, Bob or Tavon had anything. Yeah, you guys go. I'm uh, stop talking. I mean, <laughs> well, no, I mean, I definitely agree with uh, Yusuf, especially when it comes to the um, NBA 2K deal, because when it comes to um, certain players or marketable players in general, it's always about who the person can be like emotionally invested with. Like, okay, like you might've seen LeBron on one cover, but then the next cover is, is Steph Curry because he's supposed to be the new LeBron killer. You know what I'm, you know what I mean? Mm, so it's, right. um, it, yeah, it, it really just has to do with who happens to be on top or who, not even just who's on top, who, who does everyone think is going to be on top? And, uh, just being okay. honest, you know, Af- more than likely African-American people were dominating the sport. We have been for a long time. So it's right. more than likely going to be a player like that unless you have an outlier, you know, right. uh, that, that's how I see it. Kind of going on what people said. I mean, Madden, 2K, FIFA, mm-hmm. it's it's dominated by top players. I mean, I just checked FIFA's past years. I mean, it's been a mix, predominantly white, but you have black athletes on the cover represent as well i mean it's just who's dominating the sport at the time with soccer you have a a much more diverse range of players because you're dealing with multiple countries u.s you're dealing with nba and nfl which is predominantly black when it comes to the athletes on board in terms of like what expected i mean if i i've talked to people and i've told them i've gamed and a lot of questions like oh you, you you play madden you play 2k like usually the first response is oh you must be into sports games mm, and like right. i'll play them but i don't it's it's not my go-to like i don't think i've bought a updated copy like the new one out of any of them in 10 plus years <laughs> right like I always grab them when they're like free <laughs> on Game Pass. Oh, Play That's a couple fair. games with people. Be like, all right, cool, that was fun. Um, back to something else. So, so kind of on that same idea, do you have a lot of games that people sort of? expect you to play when they find out that you're a gamer or have you had any sort of moments where you surprised someone by saying oh yeah i play tekken or i play you know assassin's creed what have you because i know like for example every once in a while i'll still catch people off guard when i say i play D." um yeah, i think which i mean to be fair that's just i literally have a giant dice box i have my dice on my shelf at work that's it's not a surprise i will tell you all about all of my characters and all of their stats if you give me half an inch <laughs> first of all the best one is of course jade the tabaxi who has a swarovski oh. crystal encased violin anytime there's a tabaxi involved you know it's a good time <laughs> exactly exactly oh there's no party like a tabaxi party <laughs> um but yeah are, are there any things that you've you've any ways you've surprised people or kind of had people expect something from you when they found out you were a gamer? Not really. I mean, most people I've, I shocked a couple friends and stuff and I was told them I was getting into D and D and they were like, really? I was like, yeah, I mean, legit it's the games we play. It's, I told one of my buddies, like, it's like us playing destiny, except I don't have to use a controller. We're yep. just kind of fighting through stuff and trying not to die. He's <laughs> like, oh, okay, cool. That makes sense. Outside that, I mean, I'm not one to a hundred percent outwardly eject that I'm a gamer. I mean, I have some nerd apparel. Um, if you go to my house, you'll see nerd stuff on the wall and stuff, but it's usually conversations. I'll see, I'll see someone else with it and start talking about it. Right. Or someone will overhear me and a buddy talking about it at the bar. I shocked one of the bartenders at uh, one of the places I go. Me and my buddy were talking about D and D. Mm-hmm. just randomly we were meeting up we hadn't seen each other in about a year and they're just like oh hey yeah and we're like oh yeah me and my fiance were playing dnd and i was like wait what i just got into it <laughs> tell me about your character <laughs> and i hear like the bartender just kind of stop and look at me from across from me like wait what i went on this conversation <laughs> I, over- I feel like that's common with dnd like if you say like the words nat 20 you will get people in a 50 foot radius like what'd you roll what'd you what was it was it a stealth check was it a stealth check <laughs> Was it persuasion? Did you get it? 
that you said you don't really outwardly wear your your gamerness or your nerdness, you know, out on your sleeve. Meanwhile, there's me who I have my like line of like Marvel Funko Pops with my D and D dice on my like main shelf at work. I have an Iron Man uh, Magic Eight Ball just on the corner of my desk. Like you cannot walk anywhere near my desk without being like. Oh, she's a nerd nerd. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so Tavon, Yusuf, are you guys like outwardly gamer nerds or, or outwardly just nerds in general at all? Or, um, well, I guess. Okay. So for me, the way I sort of carry myself, the way I, I, I'm into different types of fashion and I'm into a lot of different scenes in general, but normally when I walk into a room, not many people can just guess that I'm either a gamer or a nerd or something unless I am specifically wearing something that has to do with gaming. It really isn't until someone talks to me that they're just like, oh, he's bonkers. He's bananas. He's into this stuff. <laughs> or or they'll they'll like see me perform. You know, Yusuf and I are in the same band and we performed at some VGM events and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, I get what this guy is on. Oh, I know he plays Final <laughs> Fantasy. Like, yeah. but um. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, I don't really go out of my way, but there are some people to, that can tell, but most of the time they won't, and they're just surprised at almost anything I do, to be honest. <laughs> and almost anything that I do. It's like, yeah, I, I, I'm really into axe throwing. Wait, what? I, I, I mean, that, that one caught me. <laughs> I, I, I was not expecting axe throwing. Mm. <laughs> Once I get better at bow staff, we might have to to you're gonna like, you're gonna have to skills. yeah. Please teach me, <laughs> please. It's a very slow process. I will let you know that right Dude, now. Muay Thai is a slow process. You think punching and kicking is cool until you get hit in the face, <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, oh, other people can do this to me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this goes both ways. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't like it now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Yusuf, what about you? Are you like an outwardly nerdy person or are you more like low key with it? Yeah, I, um, I think people, people, I'm not, I don't want to say the word surprised, but, um, I guess it, first for, for many people, it's, it's not as expected. Like I'll, someone will have a conversation about you know, some kind of game. I'm like, oh, I remember when I played that. I'm like, oh, you played that? I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around, I've been around, I've been around, you know, a couple of years in this life. Um, uh, so, so for me, it's uh, with, with any kind of um, medium that, that, that I do. I mean, most people are surprised that I play more than one instrument at this point still for some, yeah. <laughs> for some reason. So, uh, and that, that's like a running joke in the scene anyways. Um, but um, I, I guess I don't wear it as a badge specifically. Um, I don't have very much, you know, paraphernalia uh, myself um, because I, I spend most of it on technology and you know stuff like that. I did. I did used to have you know a collection of games, physical games, before Steam came out. Oh boy! But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, ever since then, uh, I've been kind of running digital. And I mean, if if it comes up in conversation, then I can join the conversation. But Usually I'm I'm not as hourly enthused because there aren't as many people, I think, uh, that I directly work with or that are friends of mine that just have that conversation about games. Because if we have a conversation about games, it'll easily tra it'll transition usually into some other thing, you know, pretty quickly. So, right. You know, yeah. See, I feel like the oddball out now because I'm like, just like, I walk into a room like, who wants to talk about how the MCU ruined Tony Stark? Let's go. <laughs> they didn't ruin him. They just, I have a lot of feelings. We will, I will table those because we will be here all night. Um, but yeah, I, I very much walk into a room. I mean, like case in point right now, I'm wearing a Marvel shirt. My mask that I wore out today is a Marvel mask. Like mm. I am very much like, Hey, I'm a nerd, so buckle in because that's going to be ninety percent of our conversation. <laughs> I I know we're talking about work, but can I relate this to Lord of the Rings right now? Because that would be awesome. <laughs> um, my my boss luckily has sons that he games with, 
everyone else in the office at this point is just kind of used to me. So, you know, we will be talking about something and I'll be like, oh, by the way, that reminds me. Have you ever seen that one episode of Buffy that was a movie musical, basically? <laughs> and I will either get the eye roll of here she goes again. Oh, my. Or the like, no, but I'm sure this ties in somehow. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> It's Allison cutting in on the episode for a hot second. If you enjoy listening to us, make sure to subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app to get your lately weekly, but typically bi-weekly gaming gab from us regularly. And you can follow us on the usual suspects through social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Someone told me we have a Reddit page, but I don't think I believe that. So maybe don't go there. And I speak for all of us when I say I love chatting with our Game Brew crew on Discord. So jump in the fray with us at bit.ly slash disco brew and throw some topic ideas at us there or email us at thegamebrew at gmail.com because we need help with ideas. I'm officially done with this middle bit where I ask you all to be our friend. (laughs) Um, But back to this fan freaking tastic episode. Bye! Now, in terms of, you know, since you don't necessarily openly broadcast your nerddom like I do, how do you how do you come across new people to game with? Is it just a an online thing? Do you find people in meet space to to game with and and build relationships that way? Or for me, it's been definitely meeting spaces in real life. I have two gamers in my house. Um Definitely a guy who's he's more avid of a gamer than, than myself. He plays Splatoon like every day at this point. <laughs> 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 Making sure he's not on my door. But uh, <laughs> but um, mostly for me, if it's if it's playing a game, I'll be playing at someone's house, playing you know with someone in person. I've kind of stepped away from online gaming because I like it too much. Right. Actually, <laughs> I used to actually game a lot until I really started playing music and doing other things like that. Because I, I wanted to do so many other things. I was like, man, I'm going to play this game right now. I got to go online. I got to play. And then like, I was like, man, I'm not learning this thing. I have to do for this show that I got to play. <laughs> so, right. Or, enough. you know, I, I got to take out the trash, but not, not right now. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm so close to this next achievement. It, it, I can just, I can taste it. I used to have so many Pokemon cards. <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's not a common, that's not common knowledge. Really. What happened but to I, them? Did you sell them? Uh, actually there was a fire in my house oh. uh, when I was a kid and, Ooh. uh, the insurance doesn't really cover that. <laughs> it's Which not really. is ridiculous. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I remember when I used to go, I, I, I had the, um, the, uh, the gold plated, you know, Charizard from like Burger King oh and my like God. Nice. The, the fucking <laughs> Mew from like, like the holographic oh ancient God. Mew from the movie. I had like two of them because I went twice, you know? So wow. like for, for me, it was like, like for me as a nerd, it's like very, very uh, like underground because I went to a school that was predominantly Latino and a lot of Latinos that were there had kind of, had kind of just arrived in America in, in within the past 10 years. So, they didn't really have, they didn't have the money or the means to really, games are a very expensive thing. Right. So they didn't really have the money or the means to, to, to put their time into that. So gaming in my high school was not, it was like not really a thing at all. I mean, you had like, you had maybe five nerds out of 400 students. And I mean, you have more people in gangs than, than on the sports team. So, <laughs> so, so gaming was way down at the bottom of the list. Yeah, it was way down at the bottom of the list. So I couldn't really come out with like being a gamer in that kind of situation. I kind of had to, you know, I had to really, you know, uh, put on a different type of persona at the time. Um, you know, I grew up in the hood, so that wasn't hard anyway. So, I mean, right. if nothing else, it was just code switching. Yeah, um, actually, that is a great uh, kind of that gives me an idea for a question that's not on the list. I'm going off script, Allison, and you can't oh, no, stop me. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> let me, let me, um, before I go into it, I mean, if there's anyone else who wants to, um, you know, talk, yeah, did anybody you know? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> for me, uh, I've always had, how can I say this? Just growing up for me, even though like I um, was definitely around the hood a lot, I was around a bunch of grown 
I'll just say it. I was around a bunch of grown gangster nerds. It's like they all they did if they weren't outside, like doing God knows what they would be coming inside to like my grandmother's house. Like, oh, what's up, T? Hey, man, I got this new I got this new game. You want to check it out? Hey, I got Sonic. What's this? So I was used to just playing with other people. And then by the time I got in school, um, I, I went to private school for a I say up until high school. So a lot of them were nerds. And then in high school, I jumped into the whole MMO deal. So mm-hmm. I was just constantly um, playing with other people in general. And if I wasn't meeting new people physically, it would just be another person from an MMO saying, hey, have you tried this game? So I'm jumping on another one and jumping on another one, jumping on another one. And right. then um, uh, nowadays, it's just through conversation, whether it's a random conversation on the street or if it's at like an event like say magfest or something like that you know yeah gaming people on the street dude let me tell you something <laughs> just like dude a- no dude did it so finding random people hey you want a game no not, e- not even that it's, it's more like okay so <laughs> homeless guys so, like yeah, oh sure okay hey let's get it no, listen no, no, you no, make like, friends you know, how you make friends you might, you might be you might be talking to somebody in starbucks or like yousef knows that um i do a lot of funny videos in my spare time and um sometimes people will just see me like recording something and they're like, Hey, what, what's up with this? Or what inspired this? Or, Hey, what do you do outside of this? Is this your thing? Um, or I might be doing some weird pose. That's like an anime reference or something. And then we'll just get to talking. And, um, we just you're go just from there. Naruto running down the street. All right, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. So I have, I was joking, I have, sir. I, I have never done that actually, and um, it's funny because in high school, when I say like I had um nerdy friends in high school, it was like everybody else was doing that, but I wasn't. But I was still at the weird kid table. You know what I mean? So it, <laughs> yep. it didn't really matter. It's just like, hey, why aren't you running down there? Because it's very hard to do with a backpack full, full of books. It's, it's very hard. To do. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, I, it I, is. And I was on a track team. I'm saving my energy, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I have a meet this evening. I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny thing is, like, I feel like I've gotten less uh, uh, social in terms of gaming mm. um, because like in like high school and everything the the majority of the gaming I did was at Allison's house and by the majority I mean like 98% of the gaming um, also a hyper nerd bad yeah influence. she was she was a, my bad nerd influence back in the day huh. um, was just I would go to her house to hang out and it'd be I got this new game I got this new game I got this new game and I was just kind of like okay I, sure. But like, as I've gotten older, I do a lot more like mobile gaming. I do a lot more. Um, well, I guess D&D is still very social, but it's it's not a necessarily going out to meet people to game. Mm. It's I, I started a, a D&D game through work um, or I started a D&D game with people that I already knew from the community theater scene here. Um, it wasn't like me going to like the local uh, like Gamer Oasis, which is the game uh, shop near us. Um, it's not like I'm going in there and going, hey, who's got a game that has room for another party member? Oh. You know, <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm not brave enough for that yet. <laughs> well, that's a personal question. <laughs> <That> is, <laughs> Let me not. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, what about you? When did you uh, or do you do more meat space gaming or more? So, I mean, growing up, it was all, I mean, it was social base. I mean, I was a kid. I had a Nintendo since I was like six months old. My dad's boss gave it to him to give to me as a gift. So, I mean, I grew up playing NES with my dad. I grew up going like uh, yard sale shopping and thrift storing. Any NES, NES game I could find I was under like $2. My mom was like, all right, cool, you can have it. So I had a mass collection of NES games. And when I got to elementary school, it was nice. like, hey, you guys want to come over and play stuff? Like, I haven't even touched half the games I have. Um, and so people would come to my house um, or I'd pack up stuff. I'd had a, like, a book bag and a box of stuff I'd take over to a friend's house to play. You just came prepared. Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in the city. Like, I grew up in the ghetto not a lot of people had what i had so i was able to just take it and either invite people over or go to people's houses so they could play stuff that they haven't played nowadays i mean most of my gaming's with people that i know through some still through high school mostly through college but every now and then we're like all right 
we want to play something, but no one's on. If we're on Destiny, we'll hop on LFG and have social space and meet with people. Or in game, we'll just randomly find people like, hey, you want to play with us? All right, cool. Make a party. Some people, we do a mission and leave because we're sick of talking to them because they're annoying. Or I still got people I know from games um, that I've talked to for years that they're like, oh, well, if you guys are getting that game, I'll get it too because I want to keep talking to you guys. Has anybody else had that where they they've made friends via gaming that they've stuck with for eons? Man, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so here's the funny thing: like um, the same crew that I was playing MMOs with in high school, um, the same crew that I play games with now. It's like, um, and I I actually know them. Like it was a guy that I went to private school with like before I got to high school and he went to a different high school than I went to and he met all these guys and I became friends with them because of gaming and then he just went and disappeared uh and they were just like hey you want to meet in real life I mean you seem like a cool guy (laughs) I mean we we were all we were all still kids you know so it was like all right cool let's see you know we were at the mall and it's like uh all right, let's get back to gaming. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, I've seen you. I can verify that you are a real person and not some creep. Now let's, I'll see you I'm going to go back concert. to my computer now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at the next rave. Let's get it. <laughs> see, I had the, the same kind of thing happen where there were a couple um, online RPGs that I had done that there were two different people that I was like, you actually seem like a decent person. Let's actually like, be friends outside of this and one of them now uh, i have been her friend long enough to see her child like her two kids be born and one of them is now five years old or almost five and i'm just like literally every time we like hang out now i'm just like i've known you too long i'm (laughs) i'm seeing this i'm seeing this child turn into a person i've been here too long he is now developing attitude i don't like it i'm out (laughs) this friendship is older now that your kid is old enough to sass me oh no they can speak oh no yeah that's the thing the the little one can't yet so we're still good but once that one starts talking i'm done oh it's not like me and my siblings uh, uh, Yusuf, what about you? Have you had any like long-lasting gamer friends that you have met in real life? Oh, um, I guess Anton could be considered like a long-lasting gamer friend. Like he's like a lot of things. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so he's like more than just that. I think like all the friends that I have, like they're long-lasting everything friends in like so many different ways. I don't think. So I'm going to be straight. Like, I don't know if I have any specific gamer friends. Like, I don't think I have any, like, friends that I just game with, that I just do. Like, we do so many th- different things that it's, like, it's hard for me to really, you know, say that I have any specific friends that are that, that kind of fall into that. You know, I have friends that, I guess, you know, exercise friends or, you know, um, Food friends, things like that. But the, most yeah. of them are like kind of like all in that kind of vein. So it's it's hard for me to say specifically. Yeah, man, yeah. dude, it's freaking bananas. Because like, if you see what Yusef and I could do in a day, we've gone from making music together, watching him cook. Now I'm cooking now to to building stuff, building walls. Like <laughs> it's uh, it's it's a lot of things. Um, I, I've realized Yusef has a lot of friends that are into so many different things. That um, it's just like oh, okay. Uh, so when we're gonna build this village? A, <laughs> I was about to say you guys could plan a concert, build the set, perform the show, and videotape it to put up on YouTube actually, all in the same that day. That is not a lie. We've, we've actually, actually done, done that. that <laughs> we've, we've actually <laughs> done that before. <laughs> we've done all that. Yeah, we've done it all. And this then you said fed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually happened. That actually happened. I'm going to need to be invited the next time this happens. I'll just stand back and watch because I like have you. Did you get like a time lapse of all of that happening? Because that would have been like amazing to see. Oh, man, that, I don't want to. Not for me. I don't want to see myself in those situations. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely I definitely don't want to see myself in those situations. Oh, um, That's fair. I mean, That's I mean, fair. We, we played MAGFest once and I think it was like. 24 hours before the show, we were just, it was just crazy. Bro. It was crazy. Absolutely. I feel like cons especially are just like, 
I feel like they are a make or break for friendships too. Like you either, like if you go to a con with a group, you either come out loving everybody or you have left them behind and you have got a whole new group of friends oh, by the time man. you leave. I've seen it. <laughs> Confirmed, Bob hates me. Lies and slander. <laughs> it's okay, Bob, you can be honest. She can't hear you right no, now. No, I just need to bring out the rum sooner next time. Oh. It, it is the fastest way to get her on your side. Can confirm. Did not work <laughs> at nine years old, but you know. This man said, pass the Cavalcier. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we met at nine years old, sir. <laughs> there was no crevassier <laughs> on the soccer field. <laughs> there was Capri Sun and orange slices. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let me rephrase. There was Capri Sun, orange slices, and hating everyone else on the soccer team. Oh, That's how our man. friendship started. We Before we were, like, best friends, we were just salt friends. <laughs> like, just, it was just, did you see her, like, dodge that ball? Yeah, yeah, she totally dodged it. She could have kicked it. We could have gotten a goal off of that. And no. that was that was the start of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> okay, so kind of like on the subject of, of cons and, and things like that. Oh boy. Um, when you go to cons, do you feel like you are a part of the gaming community? Or is there any, like, in terms of, like, inclusivity, do you ever feel like there's been an experience where, like, you, you weren't included in part of the gaming community because of being a black gamer or was it just a like an all love sort of situation so oh man uh so i it's very weird because i'm i guess i could say i was sort of blind to any of that for a good little while cuz i'm uh i'm actually a very shy person but these days, because of some conditioning, um, whenever I'm around large crowds, I I tend to like just let my energy loose. So um, anyone I run into, you know, it, it's almost like an open arms thing. So uh, I, I can't really say I've ever felt like I wasn't a part of something. It was just more like I, I didn't really reach out at all because I was just a quiet dude. Um, gotcha. So uh, that's really how I feel about it. I mean, nowadays I go to any type of convention or anything like that. Chances are I'm leaving with 75 new Facebook friends. I didn't high five half the people in the room. <laughs> I don't drink with I don't know how many people. It's people from the, the con the year before saying, hey, dude, you want to drink again? And I'm like, who are you? Because I was gone. <laughs> like, like to the point that maybe Yusef might have to carry me on his shoulder and we got to go home. But um. <laughs> So basically, <laughs> if at any point any of us get the con crud, we can probably tie it back to you. Ah. Uh, because <laughs> you were the one high-fiving everybody and, hey, and drinking with everybody. Hey, and, I, and hey look, I knows. got mad flu one time, and I was like, never again. <laughs> <laughs> never again. Wash your hands, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, what about you? I know you went to to Magfest with Allison and and that whole Motley crew this uh, past year. So, I mean, anytime I've been to any of them, like I've I like to people watch at times, so I'm kind of on the side, just kind of taking it all in. But then, if there's something I want to do or something I'm interested in, like I go all out. Uh-huh. I remember two years ago I was up in Boston for PAX East for the oh, Borderlands yeah. 3 announcement. And we were in line just making friends. Like, <laughs> we were in line like two hours before the event and still like a couple hundred people in front of us. And just people were set up. They had TVs with Jackbox games on them spread out <laughs> through everywhere. Nice. People were playing that. Pretty much everyone had their Switch out. We were playing games. Yep. I remember crushing a group of kids in Smash and then getting completely obliterated in the next group I went to. So I was <laughs> like, all right, I'm going to go back to these guys because I can compete. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I've never once been, like, in that arena kind of looked at. Mm-hmm. The most I'll get is, like, if I do a cosplay or something, just that double take, like, oh, that's what you're doing. Let me get a picture. Right. I know... We drew a bunch of attention at MAGFest. We did a giant Sailor Moon cosplay with the gender boot. Yes, you did. Um, uh, yep. I've, I've seen those pictures. <laughs> so that was a big thing. Like, we were just kind of all walking around separately. And it's like, people were like, what's going on? And then we all met for big group photos. And there's like, oh, we had lots of people. That's... Stop. I'm like, okay, cool. But outside of that, I mean, 
pretty much everyone's there to either do what they want to do or be happy and meet new people. So true. True. I feel like I've noticed at cons that um, I am I am very much like if I'm on the the floor, like walking around and cosplay and stuff, I am very much like keep to myself and kind of like you said, like people watch you put me in a panel (laughs) and they open that thing up for questions. It's just like I've got a question. Uh I've got a question. Like I'm going to like I forget which uh, panel it was at Awesome Con last year, but I remember like Allie went with me and I had like three questions, um, but it was every time you asked a question, you got a, a shirt or a button. And I started having to like hand off stuff to Allie because I was just like, I've, I've got a shirt. I, I got the shirt I wanted. Here, here you go. You've, you've got shirts now. <laughs> but like, meanwhile, when I was like on the on the floor of the con, like somebody would have to come up to me and be like, oh, you're cosplaying Maria Rambo. I'm Carol Danvers. Can we get a picture? And I'd be like, oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, yeah. But like I was not the person that was going up to the the Captain Marvels to get pictures because I was just like, I'm just going to walk around and be invisible. (laughs) Yusuf, what about you? Have you had any any memorable con experiences? Um, Pertaining to like inclusivity specifically in that in that way. Yeah. Or just in general. Um, At this point, we're just sharing stories. (laughs) Well, I mean, so I. My first convention was actually probably Otakon 2004. Okay. I think that was, or 2003, I think. I've seen a lot of things uh, change, for better, for worse, and, and, and just things that have kind of just stayed the same. What I've noticed the most about the conventions that I've been to, uh, I, let, me, let me put two, there's like two separate categories for me. There's, there's anime conventions and there's gaming conventions, right? So okay. to me, those are very different things. So when it comes to anime conventions... Um, cause I, I, I've been going to those, you know, for a longer period of time than I've been going to gaming conventions, anime conventions, people come there to, there's like, there's like very, it seems like there are very few reasons why people kind of used, at least back in the day, used to go to these cons back in the day, the marketplace was something that was like, kind of like that. And like the release of something before it was released to the public and there's there was some kind of showcase of a specific thing so back in the day you know seeing a trailer that you know you could only see at at the con okay. you know things like that i did notice culturally that people kind of go to those conventions with their own friends and so yeah, yeah. to kind of it's like this large swath of people who are like segregating themselves it's like 30,000 people who kind of have their own cliques. They go to these specific conventions. They don't want to talk to anyone else except their friends. They don't really particularly care about making any more friends necessarily. At least that's what I noticed, you know, back in the day, especially earlier on. You know, there were places that you could go to where, you know, you could commingle and you could the made cafes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The culture I've seen um, is that, you know, yeah, you have a lot of people, you know, cosplayers, things like that, that they want, they kind of want to just be with their, they came there with their friends, they're enjoying the convention with their friends. So the whole, like, cross integration, like, I come with my friends, but like, hey, I want to talk to this guy, hey, I want to, you know, make friends with, with, with these people, that didn't work nearly as easily. I think in those kind of situations, because they didn't necessarily force you into having to interact in some kind of way. Like you have a lot of people who are socially awkward who go to these events, right? Right. So you have a lot of people who want to stick to themselves, to stick to the people that, you know, their friends are their comfort zone and they're bringing their comfort zone with them to this event, right? Um, I wouldn't know what you're you're talking about as I sit here recording this with my best friend within arm's reach. (laughs) (laughs) Right, so like like that's that's, that's kind of like a a common thing, uh, I think, you know, for people to do in those kinds of situations. And so I've been in situations where like, you know, like, hey, you know, want to talk to the person? Hey, you know, how's it going? And then, you know, they're just, you know, they, they look fearful. They're like, oh, God, you know, this big black guy. Who, who oh, like, man. what are you talking to me for? <laughs> where, where are you coming from? You know, like, oh, never mind. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I'm Godzilla right now. But uh, <laughs> I just wanted to talk about the game, but OK. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it was, you know, it was hard back then. You know, I was, you know, heavily into anime at that time. Actually, I was more into anime than I was in anything else at the time. You know, more than music, more than anything else, really. But I remember when I did come across other musicians and gamers, it was like it was much easier to talk to them uh, because those things are highly interactive. Right. On like, 
you know, either like a online level or, you know, even a, like a in-person level, right? So now with gaming conventions, you know, it felt a lot different. On gaming conventions, you know, you can sit down, someone is doing tabletop or someone's doing, you know, playing, you know, a bunch of consoles. You can just randomly just sit down and, hey, I have to, I have to interact with you because right. I have to play this game right next to you, right? So... I saw your miniature and it looks awesome. I need to be at your table. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, you know, it, it forces you to have that interaction with this other person. Now, the person still might be fairly socially awkward, but I think, you, you know, it's easier to break through that person's, you know, shyness in that situation, in that moment when, you know, they're kind of forced to interact with you in that kind of way. And people, you know, you know, people like to, you know, they get into their game and like, oh, you know, I'm killing you. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm dead. You know, <laughs> you're so great. I love what you're doing to me. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I've just had better luck with my um, interactions at gaming conventions specifically. I stopped going to Otakon uh, years back because it was just, it just, it just like, so I've been to Otakon, I've been to Katsukon, I've been to Anime USA, I've been to PAX, I've been to MAGFest, I've been to a couple, couple of other things like that. And I do like what I see and they have a lot of good programs and things like that. Um, but like I said, that that bubble issue where people are kind of like in their own cliques and that's a very, you know, big barrier to kind of surpass when you're trying to actively make friends in those situations. You have a lot of people who they don't go to social events. They don't go and hang out with new people all the time. So when they go to these events and there are people who go to these conventions alone, you know, and they don't know right. anyone and they're going for the first time. And, you know, it's their it's it's really you know, breathtaking to be in a situation like that when you're taken out of your element of being at home, kind of being quiet, interacting online, you know, behind some kind of veil. And then you're thrust into a situation where you have to, you know, be around all these people at one time and, you know, right. potentially interact with them. It just seems like a really big, you know, it's a, it can be a very, you know, intimidating situation. So, uh, yeah. right. Just, just social gaming as a whole is, whether you're at a con or whether, like I said earlier, I'm not brave enough to walk into the local game shop and ask to sit in on a D&D &D session yet. Like, <laughs> just gaming face-to-face -face with people is still just a whole other level of interaction with humans that I'm not sure I'm, I'm ready for yet. It is asking a lot. <laughs> it is, it is. And, and the thing is, it's like, you know, be, you know talking smack on you know, multiplayer game is not the same as like being in the room. You got a lot of, you got a lot of, you know, keyboard warriors. You got, you know, man. everyone is like, yep. the man. everyone's the man, right? Everyone is the man until like you're in person and you're like, wow, you're a lot more timid than I realized. Yeah. You know? And the real <laughs> you know? dirty yep. man comes in the room. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you can definitely tell the people who haven't played spades in the same room with each other. Woo! Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is a quick way to ruin a friendship, a relationship. <laughs> that is, you are, that is probably the most toxic social gaming I've ever seen in the game of spades. How, how many people, how many people came out of Juneteenth broken up over a game of spades? Oh, that's what I'm taking from this podcast. Well, it had to be online, you know, this past Juneteenth, so. Oh my God. Hold on a second. I have a, I have a Karen but whispering at me. Hold on a second. Oh, she's not, <laughs> not a Karen. A she's giving me a look right now. I'm so. She's not a Karen. She's. Oh <laughs> no. I've, I've just been told to leave. I'm sorry. I've got to go. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I've been kicked off the pod. Oh jeez. <laughs> If you just want to do wrap up, you got to solve. Oh, oh. Wow. Um, she is, however, shutting down our party. Um, <laughs> so sorry, podcast hour, Patty here. It's an hour. Is just it's an hour shutting down podcast. the podcast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we can all hang out later. We're having fun. That's all it is. We're having fun. <laughs> Um, I'm glad we didn't go any deeper. Oof. Oh boy. Yeah, that's the whole thing. There should be a. a Black Ops Game Brew 2, where we get into the real... <laughs> no, totally. Do, do more. I, I'm down. I'm way down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so just kind of wrapping this up. Um, if there was like one like quick sentence that you could give to the gaming community in terms of inclusivity for black gamers, what would it be? Uh, we'll start with Bob. Biggest thing is, it's a lot easier to get your content out there. I mean, the industry is growing, but the people making it, I think 1% are black. This is the last time it was recorded. So 
they're not getting everyone's story to put into this. So, I mean, indie games get a lot more love. Anyone out there who wants to make a game, has a story for a game, find a way to put it out there. I mean, that's the only way it's going to get out there. Everything with gaming is based around a story. Get your story out there, and maybe I'll be playing it next. Uh, Yusuf, what about you? I'd say probably to you know be open with your with your interests mm. you know don't don't you know be worried about being judged for the interests that you have because being open about your interest helps you promote more people being interested in what you're interested in you know if if, if someone's yeah. like oh you know you're in the into gaming oh let me try that game you have to create that comfort zone for other people so yeah. um especially you know black people who, who want to you know get more into gaming mm. um you know, because there's, there, there can be a barrier for them, too. So I think that's 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 a very important thing to do. All right. Devon, what about you? Um, wow. Everybody sort of covered all the good points. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm not really good with a whole bunch of statements, but definitely be open. Um, as far as developers, if you have ideas, run with it, man. You know, you never know who you'll touch or where, where it will go. You know, and um, for those overthinking ideas, like overthinking it to a point that... Um, you don't know if you want to distribute it or not, or even want to take part in something or not. Well, I'll just take a good old quote from SpongeBob. Calm down, son. It's just a drawing. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just, just be open and do you, man. Yep. Um, and I will kind of add my piece in. Hallmark has made the same movie 50,000 times oh with, you know, <laughs> like three different blonde and or brunette women. <laughs> If they can make that movie 50,000 times and market it to people, you can market your game because at least it's original. Mm-hmm. So I say don't be afraid to to put yourself out there because like everybody else has said, your story matters. And I think that coming like going forward, we will see a lot more of stories similar to ours reflected in that. So, mm-hmm. again... Even if you think it's bad, don't overthink it. It's just an idea, and the worst that can happen is somebody says no. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to hand this back to Allison and let her have control of the show again. Well, I was going to start with, you are the only person who could take a podcast episode like this and end it on a note about Hallmark movie. (laughs) Like, literally, the only person I know who could ever do that. Listen, I've seen a lot of I know you have. I know you have. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for being with us today. It is awesome. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. For our listeners, if you can relate these questions, we'd love to hear your input on any of them, too. So throw them in our Discord in the episode discussion tab at bit.ly slash disco brew. Or just come in there to say hi. We're nice most of the time, unless we're not. (laughs) Bob can confirm. He's in our Discord. Isn't that an Enter Shikari Um, lyric? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we're nice guys until we're not. (laughs) So we loved uh, chatting about this. And this is the part of the episode where we just say goodnight, everybody, together. So goodnight, everybody. I know I said I was staying out of this episode, but I I need a quick second. You watched a horror movie? Okay, I watched a review of a horror movie. Don't judge me. I just wanted to to clarify, because I've been trying to get this girl to watch horror movies with me forever, and that has never happened. So I was confused. I watched a review of a horror movie. Wait, you know what? This is what happens when you know people too long. (laughs) 